Arsenal Industries presents NBA Draft Lottery Recap, Part 2. Okay, Jack, so out of all the lottery teams who have picked their players, who do you think, what team has the best chance to make the playoffs in the 2015-2016 NBA season? Well, obviously you got to start with Oklahoma City Thunder. Yes. I mean, they're the last team in the lottery. They had no business being in the lottery without right. injuries. So, adding Cameron Payne... Yes, that's helpful, but the real addition there is, is Kevin, Kevin Durant. Durant. Yeah. yeah, if he can stay healthy, obviously, I mean, former MVP, you don't have to talk about Kevin Durant. You know what Kevin Durant is, what he can do for a team. So definitely if you add Kevin Durant back and he's healthy for a full season, they'll be top three you know, seed in the West. Right, and then same story for two other teams in the Eastern Conference. I think the Miami Heat, Yep. health... Uh, barring should make the playoffs, and the Indiana Pacers, yep, same thing, definitely. Paul George. Health, yeah. They yeah, should pull George back. I think with all three of those teams, it wasn't necessarily the lottery and who they selected, but who's coming but back. But who's coming back, yeah, I agree. Although I do think with the Heat, obviously, having Justice Winslow back, or having uh, Justice Winslow added, is a big deal. Yeah, I think in order, most impact, impactful will be Justice Winslow Cameron Payne, and then Miles Turner. Yes, and I think one last team to talk about are the Jazz, who finished who finished pretty pretty well in a very tough Western, Western conference. conference. I think that it'll be tough for them to, to make it as an eighth seed in a still loaded Western Conference, but I think they, they have that young, uh, that young group of players to build around, and I think they could surprise people. They could start getting better pretty fast. Yeah, I just didn't want to, uh, the, to pick the Utah Jazz just because they are in that tough Western Conference. Right. But the thing about young teams is you never really know when it's going to be that season. Right. They always seem one year away, one year away. Right. But then it just happens. Like yeah. The Thunder weren't supposed to make the playoffs when they did. Uh, the Warriors weren't on this track. Like No one thought the Warriors would ever win a championship. Yeah. So... Young teams tend to improve when you least expect it. Yeah, you never know. You look at a team like the Thunder, like you mentioned, you know, taking the Lakers to seven, you know, a a few years back. You never know with some of these teams. All right, so John, who do you think was the best pick in this year's lottery? Well, we talked about it before, and I still got to go with Justice Winslow to the Miami Heat. I think Pat Riley being able to sit there and let Stanley Johnson go to the Pistons at 8, another small forward, somehow going in front of Justice Winslow, the Hornets staying put and taking Frank Kaminsky, who Michael Jordan was apparently enamored with for whatever reason that may be. And I think having, you know, the guy who to me was the fourth best player in the draft fall into your laps at number 10, I think that's ridiculous to me. It fit value, obviously. It fit need for them because they desperately need... They need another they need another. Wing. They need a wing defender more than anything because they were getting killed on defense at the end of the year when they had a shot to make the playoffs with Hassan Whiteside, you know, uh, leading that team when Chris Boss went down, and they still couldn't do it. Right. So I think uh, Winslow was definitely the best pick in the draft. Right. I will agree with you on the Justice Winslow pick, and I got two more in the... Uh, in the lottery. Number two, the number or the second pick, sorry, yeah. the Los Angeles Lakers taking Russell. I think that he's going to be a better pro than Jalil Okafor. I think it must have been a tough decision for them going back and forth between those two who are going to take the big man of the guard. Yeah. But I think overall superstar potential, D'Angelo Russell. The second one is the Orlando Magic taking Mario Hazonia. Yeah. Um, I think he's a top three player in this year's draft yeah. along with Towns and and uh, Russell. Yeah. And to me, putting him on that team, I think we're going to talk about bold predictions later. But yeah. one of my bold predictions I'll make right now is that that team needed a superstar. You look at that team, there's yeah. a lot of like good young pieces. Right, good not great players. I think Hazoni is their superstar. All right, all right. So, now that we talked about some of the, some of the best picks here, who do you think had a bad pick in this year's lottery? I think that probably the worst pick in the lottery um, was probably the Nuggets taking Emmanuel Moutier. Hmm. Um, I like Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson was upset, and you know when your player is upset and he really wants to be traded, and someone like uh, Ty Lawson was making it clear that he wanted to be traded, you you kind of have to move them at that point because otherwise they're going to just make your life miserable as a GM in the front office. So I think you had to go with Moutier, but I just. 
you know, I don't mind the Moody I pick. I know they're going to groom him. They're going to, you know, they're going to try and make him uh, their point guard of the future. But I like Cameron Payne more than Moody So, honestly, I think I think Cameron Payne probably would have been a better pick. Hmm. I think Moody has all the physical traits that you want. But, as you mentioned, point guards who can't shoot, it's really tough to build around them. Right. And for me, there's two teams, back-to-back, actually, the 8th and ninth pick, who... I, I just disagreed with what they were doing. Yeah. And I mean, it's the draft, so you never know. They could be right. I don't see how the Pistons take Stanley Johnson over Justice Winslow. Definitely. I think that's a preference because I think they're yeah. similar type players. Yeah. But I think Winslow has more playmaking potential, and I think he's got a higher upside than Johnson. Yeah. So I think maybe they're thinking safer pick. Right. And then... The Hornets, I just think that was a terrible pick. Right, and I agree. I, I, I absolutely like, agree with you. I like Frank Kaminsky as a player. I think he doesn't fit in well with that team. No. They have Cody Zeller. They traded for Spencer Hawes. They have Al Jefferson. Right. That's got to be one of the worst. They picked Noah Vonley last year. They traded him, but they still they picked another right. big man who can who's a scorer, not so much a defender. Right. But between those four guys, that has to be one of the worst defensive front courts in the entire absolutely. League. Okay, so moving on to who was drafted by the wrong team. Jack, who do you think was the player who has a lot of potential but was drafted by the wrong team in the wrong situation? Right. So one of my favorite players in this year's draft, Devin Booker, the shooting guard from Kentucky. I think he's got a potential somewhere between J.J. Redick and Klay Thompson. Yeah. But I think on the Suns team, at least the way it's currently constructed, he was drafted by the wrong team. Yes. First of all... They have a lineup that features two point guards. Yeah. So where does that leave any room for a shooting guard? I mean, you can't really play small forward. He's no. undersized. They so still have Gerald Green. They st- well, Gerald Green, I believe, is free agent. But they should be bringing back Brandon Knight, and they have Bledsoe. So that takes up both their starting uh, guard positions. Right. And those guys are going to play 34 minutes a night. Yeah. So that only leaves 28 minutes off the bench, and there's numerous guys there. You got yeah. Goodwin. You got... You got Bullock. Yeah. Um, I believe they have another point guard, if I'm not mistaken, over there. But yeah. there's just too many guards there for, for Booker to find consistent playing time. Yeah, I agree with you. Is, I, is, there, a, yeah. is there anyone you feel that was also drafted by, by the wrong team? Well, I think we talked about... I think the biggest problem with the 76ers is that that's a team where players now are looking at that situation with... Guys being traded, you know, you had the former Rookie of the Year, Michael Carter-Williams, who was, you know, traded one year after. And players are looking at that, and they're scared to go to a situation like that where they don't know if they're going to be traded right away. They don't know if they're just a trade piece. They're going into a losing culture that wants to lose and wants to tank. And I think that Okafor going into that, it could be harmful to him and his potential. Right. Okay. So, now that we're moving into bold predictions, based on what you just said about the losing culture in Philadelphia, I think this is the year where they finally start to move forward. Okay. It seems like they've been perpetually losing and rebuilding through the lottery. I get your point about Michael Carter-Williams. I would disagree and say that I don't think that they saw him for about a year and a half. Yeah. And they said, he can't shoot, he's turnover prone, no. unfortunately, he won, yes, he won Rookie of the Year, but in arguably one of the worst rookie classes of all time. Yeah. So I think they said, we need to move on from him. And they got a first round pick for him, That's which true. was better than probably what they thought they could get in the future. So I'm not saying the Sixers make the playoffs, because that's totally unrealistic. But I think they start to improve on their win total, and I think... Based on their athletes on their roster, the culture set in place by their coach Brett Brown of three pointers and defense. Because you got to remember, this was a team ranked in the top twelve defensively last right. year. So if they could find a way to just manufacture points, a few yeah. points, they could they win do about have a few scores. They have I, some decent scores. They have Tony Rowan. They have some pretty good guys out there. I'll tell you what. I think score. they're going to win thirty two games next year, which okay. would be a monumental leap for them. Oh, and absolutely. I think that sets them up for potential playoffs in the following But year. my question to you is, do they want to win 32 games? Do they want to be potentially an 8th seed in the East? When you saw someone like the Heat, they missed the playoffs at 10, they wound up with Justin Win- Justice Winslow, and then somebody like uh, 
the the eight seed uh, last year in the in the East. I can't think of who it is off the top of my head. Um, the Boston. Celtics. The Celtics. Oh. Or the Celtics were the seventh seed, but you know they this fell. Year. Yeah, they fell all the way to. Uh, they fell all the way to a uh, seventeen. Sixteen. Sixteen and. Uh, I know and, the Terry Rose here. Right. So. Well, I would say thirty two wins is not gonna get you the eight seed. I know how terrible the East is, but that's just not gonna get you the eight seed. I just right. think it's a. Uh, it's growth for the Sixers, and yeah. I think for a team that's been losing so much, that modest growth is actually going to be a big deal for them. Yeah, I agree with you there. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please please let us know. Please, if you have any suggestions for our channel, leave it in the comments below, and we look forward to hearing them.